Hello and welcome to the third episode of Know Your Blood, Know Your Health. Still your favorite host, Uche Namadi, and I'm with the incredible Dr. Adewoyin, a consultant hematologist. Now, in the first episode, we talked about understanding blood groups, what's in your blood. Then we moved on to talk about blood groups, nutrition, and disease risks. Is there a link? He talked to us about... Um, you know, malaria and the blood group O, of which I'm very happy that I'm blood group O. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So in this episode, we are going to be talking about blood groups, pregnancy and reproductive health. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share and follow Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Dr. Adewoyin, now we are going to go back a bit because I know you mentioned um, the RH factor right. in, the, in one of the episodes. So want to talk about how it affects pregnancy can you you know through more like because i know a lot of people just focus on the genotype yes. when the church tells them or their religious organization tells them okay you want to get married go and check yourself even though some of them talk about blood groups and genotype the people are more focused on the genotype yeah but i think they need to also know that it is important to know their blood groups and their resources. So I'm asking, how does a couple's blood group and RH factor affect pregnancy? Yeah, so the the blood group and um, of the partners in the um, um, in the reproductive business <laughs> um, is very important. Yeah. If you I mean you alluded to what we call the um, um, the hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn. Oh, um, it's that thing that we need to talk about in order to um, drive home this point. Okay. Now, blood group in itself doesn't confer any fertility advantage. So the fact that you have blood group O or blood group B doesn't make you more fertile or hmm. fecund. It's it's the problem around um, mismatch of blood group antigens, especially the resource factor, has to do with import or the the impact on the unborn child. Yes. Now I will play a scenario, a clinical scenario, okay. and take for instance, if you have an unborn child that is resource factor positive, it's got the resource factor. Yes. And then you have a mom who is resource negative. What you're going to have is that you can have sensitization of the mother. Hmm. We call it sensitization. Or what we call average isoimmunization. That's a bigger term. Now, what then happens is that the mother begins to see those cells as strange. And the mother's immune system kicks in to say, look, this is a foreign body. What mm. is positive doing here? Mm. You know, it shouldn't be here. And so the mother produces antibodies that eventually goes through the placenta and then goes to the unborn child and begins to destroy the cells in the unborn child. Mm. If the red cells are destroyed, it causes shortage of red cells or shortage of blood called anemia. And then if it progresses and is not arrested, it's going to make the child's heart to fail. Wow. What we call eye drops fetalis. And then the child begins to swell, and then that can culminate in death. So that is an outcome nobody wants. Hmm. Nobody wants to carry a pregnancy and lose the, the pregnancy. So that is the biggest risk that we have to deal with when there is a mismatch in blood group between the unborn child and between the mother. But that factor the resource factor that the unborn child is carrying is coming from the dad. So we can make an extrapolation. Mm. And that's why we always do what we call psychosity check for the father. It's not just, and that's why we encourage men to come for antenatal checks too. Wow, It is one of the reasons why, you know, we encourage when you're coming for antenatal, the pregnancy is not just about the wife, it's about the wife and the husband. And we need to check male and female. You know, so we can be able to project and say, oh, yeah, ah, this father is Irish positive. This mother is Irish negative. We might have a problem of this, mm. you know. And then if we're beginning to notice those problems, you know, um, in the unborn child, 
we're beginning to look at, look, how do we take sample? Let's look at the severity, the amount of damage of the red cells that is happening in the unborn child so that we can plan, you know, um, how to salvage the situation and reduce the chance of death for the unborn child. So this is one prime reason why we always like to have that average factor established mm. so that we can manage that pregnancy better in, um, in, in, in um, pregnant women. Wow. So I wanted to ask if blood group mismatches between partners can cause fertility or pregnancy problems. So I see you've addressed the pregnancy part. Correct. Fertility problems, aside the average, other blood group mismatch, can they cause um, fertility problems? No. So there are no fertility issues that can come out of blood group antigens okay. because it doesn't confer any advantage on fertility. It doesn't help to increase the number of eggs or the quality of the sperm cells. It has no association with that, but it clearly has association with the pregnancy um, and it can negatively impact pregnancy outcome if there's a mismatch hmm. in those blood group antigens. Hmm. Yeah. Speaking of the hemolytic disease of the newborn, um, in your experience are there ways or do clinics let me put it that way have um uh do they have setups for counseling um parents you know that may be at risk for this because you've beautifully stated yeah. how it can come about so how do people get away because a lot of our listeners might not even have a clue that this exists yeah. except maybe for the medically inclined yeah so what, what would be your suggestion or are there existing, you know, awareness campaigns for this HTN? Yeah, so first of all, I should say that, you know, what we call pregnancy is considered to be normal until after the pregnancy. Wow. So punch line. Anything can go wrong. Mm. So in technical terms, we say normal pregnancy is a retrospective diagnosis. Mm. So what that means is that at every phase of pregnancy, we have to manage actively. Just like during labor too, there's what we call active labor management. Even in pregnancy, you have to manage. And active management means that you have to identify all the risk and you're on top of all this risk. And so um, pregnancy and childbirth should be offered in a setting where there is that capacity to identify this risk and manage. Mm. So you see principles like early booking, mm. we encourage. Because if you book early, there are what we call booking visits, where we'll do a lot of test parameters, including this ABO blood group, including the resource factor. And so you know early in pregnancy, or even before pregnancy, of course, we'll recheck during pregnancy. And then you know this information, the obstetrician and the team taking care of the pregnant woman, they're going to be able to say, no, we might have a problem here. And even before the problem surface, they are already acting on it, you know. So that is why it's important that every pregnancy must be registered. And then the pregnant woman and the unborn child and the, you know, the, the pregnant father, too, there's anything like that, <laughs> or the man father. responsible for the pregnancy <laughs> must hmm. contribute to the entire process and must be a part of that process by, you know, having their blood works done as well and supporting the entire pregnancy process. So it's important that the pregnancy must be registered in a standard facility and then the right team, you know, um, are on ground um, to monitor that pregnancy. Once there is a discrepancy or a mismatch in that blood group type, that becomes an Irish pregnancy. And there is protocol for managing this Irish pregnancy situation. So because of what I explained earlier about the hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn, like I said, oh. pregnancy is hard work and nobody wants to lose that child. You yes. know? So it is important that this knowledge is out there and people know that it's not just that we like seeing the face in clinics, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is that we need to ensure that we get our job done. It's a duty of care to ensure that all these tests are done. And then we do all this monitoring to ensure safety of mother and the unborn child. So it's like you're reading my mind ahead of time because I was <laughs> going to ask you why blood group testing is part of a standard antenatal, you know, care test. But right. you've beautifully explained that. So please, I would like you to tell, talk to the, the um, mothers or the potential mothers out there because I know a lot of... Um, pregnant ladies decide that 
okay, I've given birth to the first one, I've given birth to the second one, uh, and I didn't attend antenatal. Please help us emphasize on the need to attend their antenatal visits from from the beginning to, to the, the last end. day. Yeah. <laughs> because this is actually something that can be picked up during those visits. Because Absolutely. you said once they come in, you do a comprehensive test. Correct. Yes, please. So for, for the mothers at the back, let me put it that way. Correct. Help us say it again. <laughs> yeah. So it is important to have early booking. Yeah. Um, and one of the, what we try to achieve with early booking is that uh, you want to date that pregnancy correctly because some people can't even remember their last period. Number two, and that is important even in terms of managing that pregnancy, in terms mm. of outcomes, in terms of when do you need to do this test, when do you not need to do this test. Uh, but for the sake of this conversation, the primary reason is because we need to have all this characterization done. We need to know your blood group, ABO blood group. We need to know your resource factor, of course, genotype and all those other things follow. And when we know, we can actively manage. You see, the first pregnancy can be normal. Second pregnancy can go wrong. No two pregnancies are the same. Are the same. As a matter of fact, there are some complications that are associated with ABO mismatch or blood group mismatch that will not come out during that first pregnancy. Because mm. that first pregnancy is when the person gets sensitized. Yes. So the problem or the magnitude of the problem will be minimal. But by the time there's a second, second pregnancy, one, subsequent one. that is when there will be a lot of problems. You know, so it's important to have all of this, you know, checks done so that we don't have stories that touch the heart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Another amazing journey on blood groups, pregnancy, and reproductive health. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sendab Nigeria on YouTube and Spotify. Stay with us. There is more coming your way.